Try in this stupid dulcimer um, makes me happy, and I need I need some happy this week. Um, uh, big shout out to everybody down home here. Uh, good to be you know back where I belong, and. Uh, Let's talk about, let's talk about Lavoie Vinegar. Let's talk about Oregon. And there's been, um, you know, a lot of news came out in the last, in the last uh, 24 hours. As you know, uh, a group of uh, militia, and I'm, I'm going to call them Patriot Militia. Uh, I know a lot of people are saying no. I, I think they were. They, they believed in something. I think they um, wanted to, in some way, peacefully protest an overarching federal government. People up north don't understand it. Uh, people in cities don't understand it. People who live in rural communities understand it. People who live down south understand it. And by golly, people who live out west understand it. You know, when uh, when the BLM can come in and, and just take over, you know, ranches and... and, and it just it's a, it's a stinking mess and and nobody was listening so they they took over this this bird sanctuary which in the dead of winter nobody was using anyway you know because of on news and it was peaceful i mean there was no buildings being burned down there was no rioting in the street there was no looting of stores there was just you know hey look at us we've got we've got a, a message we do the right thing, do the wrong thing. You know what? History will be the judge of whether it was right or wrong. Okay, uh, I'm not. I'm not even here to, to to mess with that. And I think it went. I think it maybe went a little too far. Uh, I think it went a little too far uh, for the taste of the people in the area, for the for the government, for, for everybody. But that's not my call either. I, I wasn't in charge. I, I, I it just so. The leadership, the leadership of this protest, and there was a, there was a lot of issues, not just the BLM, but that was that was a big one. Uh, are on their way, under, you know, I guess a flag of truce to go and speak with the sheriff, which they recognized rightfully so, as the head law enforcement agent of, of the area. And they are stopped, stopped. You, you got uh, Bundy. Brothers, you've got uh, Lavoie, uh, some gal I forget her name, and it was rather obvious that you know that this was this was a, this was a setup. Uh, this was this was the coup de gras. The, the FBI, state police, whoever the Fed, the Feds decided they were going to uh, capture these people, and they were going to do so with extreme violence rather than you know try to take this. To a peaceful manner, and by now everybody's seen you know the the video. They they had the the road blockaded. Uh, Lavoy swerves to uh, miss the. I guess they put some spike strips down. Um, there were cars and trucks you know parked in the way of the road, and he swerves off. He nearly hits somebody. He may have actually hit someone. I, I I don't know if he actually grazed the fella. I don't know. I, I it's hard to see from the video, but it was darn close. And now that's. That's a, that's a pretty iffy item right there. Um, you know, almost hitting a, a, a uniformed police officer with your car is, generally speaking, not considered a friendly motion. And uh, uh, He gets out. He gets out of the vehicle, and his hands are up. His hands are, are clearly in the air, and he seems a little disoriented. Uh, he walks towards, I guess... Someone that he saw, ostensibly the sheriff. I don't think he would have recognized the FBI. I don't think he would have recognized the uh, state police. He would have recognized sheriff's officers. And at that point in the video is some discussion. Did he reach for a weapon? They say he had a 9mm in his pocket. Nobody ever saw him carrying it that way before. Everybody saw him carrying a sidearm. Did he reach or was he shot? I, I, I kind of think, based on what I saw... That he may have been shot while his hands were still in the air. All right, was he was he threatening in motion? I, I you know what? Without sound, without without context, a little hard. Um, 
There was an initial report that there were three shots taken. The way I saw the video, it looked like he was shot once from the back, from behind, or right-hand side. He reached to cover the, the wound and probably to, to reach it at that point for a weapon. I mean, I, I would if you're shooting at me. I want to at least try to defend myself. Uh, maybe futile, but I, I think I would try. Um, he reaches again. It appears again that he was shot a second time. Uh, and then a... Uh, another grab and a third shot is fired by a uh, by a trooper with a long gun coming in from the left hiding in the bushes uh the reports of the van being shot up well you know they first they said there was only three rounds and all of a sudden we see you know we see flashbang grenades going off we see these uh pepper or or tear gas rounds less than leave i don't know uh what would you think when you were in the car but you were being shot at. Were you going to worry whether or not it was, you know, <laughs> 223 rounds going through or some kind of pepper gas? I mean, you really wouldn't know. All right, here's the side he die on the whole thing. Okay. A lot of questions right now amongst the Patriot community. Was it a good shoot? Was it, was it unfair? Was it murder? Was it this? Was it that? In my opinion, I think they're going to find this to be a, a justifiable... Uh, lethal force incident now the question is was it a clean shoot you know what I think it can be justifiable and murder at the same time the Bible tells us that murder is to lie in wait with the intent to kill somebody I think that the um, I think the federal government the FBI agents the state police went there with the intention that they were probably going to kill somebody or at least that they would have to. The way that it was all set up, there supposedly were snipers in the trees. I believe them. Uh, the the uh, the fact that there was a uh, an officer with a with a rifle hiding in the bushes. You know that there was an ambush, uh, and and all this under the color of a flag of truce. You know, apparently these guys were going to talk things out, and they weren't going to have any of it. Would it have been so bad to wait another week, another two weeks? That's not the way the federal government does things. No, no, no. Let me tell you what the federal government does, okay? When you do something that they don't like, they do what they do at Waco, they do what they do at Ruby Ridge, they do what they do out at Bun uh, Bend, Oregon, okay? And they kill people. You know, to kill a lot of people, to stifle the patriot movement. You know, to kill one or two people, like, you know, and yeah, our passions will be inflamed, and we'll discuss this back and forth, and we'll be at each other's throats, and that's what I want to talk to you about right now. Listen, no matter how what you think about this, and there's going to be discussions on this. Listen, we're still discussing Waco. We're still discussing Ruby Ridge. We're still discussing 9-11. These things are not cut and dry. The mainstream media is not telling you the truth. So no matter what side you choose on this, you want to side with law enforcement, that's fine. You want to side with the uh, with, with Lavoy, say he was murdered, that's fine. But just remember something. When you're talking within your own patriot community, us, you know, the ones that are still trying to defend and protect the Constitution of the United States, don't beat each other's throats. Don't, uh, don't fight too bitterly, okay? Because the way that they win isn't to kill all of us. It is divide, it's conquer, it's tear us apart limb from limb. Listen, you'll be blessed. Check me out on the radio. We'll be there. And, um, find something that makes you happy for a little while take a little rest from this every once in a while that's what i'm doing god bless you man god bless you every last one of you